what I realized last year is that uh, our battle is truly a spiritual battle. It's a warfare between good and evil. And that war is happening within us. And it's happening outside of us, inside of other, everybody else around the world. Someone said the world was changing, and it is because the heart is wicked. And the same thing that's happening with you, with me, with anybody, everyone is dealing with that. When God said all who are born of the flesh is born of sin, that means that the devil, you're angry, you're in a fallen state, and the devil is working you, and you think that is you. And you're taking your aggression out on other people, you're blaming them, you're causing habit for other people thinking that it's going to make you feel better, and you only feel worse. It doesn't help you at all. And to be able to see that, it's amazing to see it. And I noticed that the more you go through in life, when you just let things happen, let life happen, realize that there's nothing you can do about it, the stronger you become, the wiser you become, and the stronger you become. And you will find yourself in the world, but not of it. You will, God has it that we can literally, because this world is going crazy. It, America is gone. And the reason that America is gone because the hearts of men and women are wicked. If you can change the heart, then the country will change. Because the, the physical world itself is fine, and just the people that live in the world are not fine. We've been taught that, well, I haven't. Most people have been taught that anger is good, and people actually believe that anger is good. Christians believe it, and non-Christians alike. Whereas anger is pure darkness and is evil. It is evil, evil, evil. There's nothing good about anger at all because it's the nature of the devil. It's the nature of the devil. And I realize I do a lot of counseling, you know, by phone and Skype and people come in. And I realize that everybody has the same problem. They're wrestling with the devil thinking that it's them. And then they go see counselors and psychiatrists and these so-called experts, and they put them on medication. Oh, you have post-stress disorder. Here's a pill. And now you walk around like a zombie with the same spirit driving you, but you're high, you can't function in, in life. You have no energy, you can't think straight, you can't see straight. Because these people have no idea what they're doing. We are possessed by evil until we overcome it. And you can overcome evil. You cannot do it of yourself, but it can be done. It really, really can. Because it's the spirit of darkness. It has nothing to do with color. It has nothing to do with male or female. It's a spirit. And we are not our bodies. We are a spirit. And when you see that, the more you see it, the more you overcome the world. You just start to, without even realizing it, you notice you're not affected by certain things and blah, 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 right? There is never a time, there is never, ever, ever, ever a time to worry, to be angry, to judge yourself or other people, to have doubt, to have fear, to be insecure, to be shy, to want something from other people, except physical things. You have a job, practical things. You know, you need a job, you need a job. You need to build a house, you need someone to help you. Those practical things we do rely on one another. But other than that, we should never rely on anyone but the truth that's in us. And as this young lady was saying, when she sat down, she realized what he's saying makes sense because she already know the truth. You just forgot the truth because you're angry. And if you start to question yourself, immediately God will start to allow you to see so you can start to overcome. You seek him, you will find him. And it's nothing like you can ever imagine. Because every imagination about God is wrong. Every thought about him comes from the devil. He's not of thoughts. He's of revelation. He's of knowing. 
you will get to a point, if you stay with it, a lot of people won't stay with it. But if you stay with it, you will come to know God. He said, my children shall recognize me by my voice. You would know his voice. You really would know it. And so you got to, got to, got to stay with it. As someone was saying, it's not easy. And so, but you got to stay with it and you will be free. And no matter, you got to get, and, and this will happen. And I'll get to that in a minute. I'm jumping ahead. But you got to stay with it. Stay with the prayer. Stay with watching you. And whatever is happening on the outside of you, it is not happening to you. When people are trying to hurt you, they are hurting themselves. They just need another devil to fight with to try to hurt so they can get a sense of pleasure, which is false pleasure because they're not happy with that. They really are not. They're as miserable as you are for reacting to it. They really are because it's the same spirit. And I realized that now, I've been doing this for like 32 years, so it's been a long time. It doesn't seem that way, but it has been. And I've just grown in ways that I never imagined. It just, and that's going to happen to you because I realized that I can, I can change anything. I'm not in control of anything. When you truly see that you're not in control of anything within you or anyone else, you'll be free. But you got to see that. The ego doesn't want you to know that you're not in control. So if someone yelling at you, you just look at them, well, they're yelling, that's interesting. And don't take it personally. I was at the, uh, where did I go, to the market somewhere yesterday. And it happened to be a black woman. And you know, black women are at the window. She's like, may I help you? I'm like, oh, yeah, I need to get this. How much does this cost? Well, it says it right there. I said, oh, I didn't see that, but what does it cost? <laughs> and the reason I went along with it because I wanted to watch myself how I felt about this. You know, like sometimes it's, it's, if you're insecure within yourself and you don't see what, this thing that's going on, you'll be afraid to ask a second question because you can't handle them going off like that. You want to hurry up and get out of the way, or you'll say something to try to make the person feel better. It looked like the clerk is angry or she's been nasty. You want to say something nice to her to make her feel better so you can feel better. You understand what I'm saying? Anybody ever done that? It's like, oh, you're so nice. When inside, you're shaking your boot and scared of her. Isn't that amazing? You got to see all these little knickknacks things that are happening inside of you <laughs> and how you try to cover it up because you have fear. And you use things to cover it up. You got to shake at the, at the window, really. And know that this person's got their own problem, but look at me, I'm shaking. That's my problem. And let yourself shake through it. It's just like when you first go and forgive your mother. Most uh, men and women are afraid to face mama, right? But you got to shake in your boots to do it. And then you learn to shake everywhere else until you're past done with this. Because if you love God, in him, there is no fear. There's no fear at all. Anyone that has fear is of their father, the devil. Anyone. And so I, I want to just say to you that there's never a, a reason to have fear, to worry, to doubt. And if you do, just know that you're worshiping the devil. <laughs> and the devil is all that. That nature that you have to overcome is an abnormal nature. 